everybody, Callum here. Now, if you've ever been to the Scottish Highlands, um, or in a lot of places around the UK, you've probably seen this stuff around you, rhododendrons. They cover entire hillsides sometimes. This time of year, June, May kind of time, they also start coming out in all these lovely colours. Big, bright, beautiful purple flowers and stuff. But they are an evergreen plant, so they're always going to have these bright green leaves and various things too. Now, when I was younger, we absolutely loved these things uh, because in Scotland, where we are now, of course, you uh, don't have the greatest weather in the world, a lot of rain, we could go inside these bushes, you could hang around inside them, you could build dens and pathways a bit like this, uh, and you didn't get wet, it was great fun. Rhododendrons, though, although they look quite at home in this country, are not native to the UK. And more than that, they're actually invasive, they're highly destructive, they can ruin an entire ecosystem and environment. And left unchecked, they are like, well, they're not like the Borg, and they're not really like grey goo in that they just kind of take over and over and over. They're almost like the orcs from Warhammer. <laughs> they are almost a genetically engineered super soldier designed to spread and destroy and ruin woodlands and hillsides. Right now, over 100,000 hectares of land around the UK are completely covered by these things. Um, that's about 3% of woodland in the UK. 53,000 roughly hectares of that uh, is right here in Scotland. And my little island of Rasse right here is no different. Now, although, again, they look quite at home around here, rhododendrons are not native to the UK. They come from Europe, they come from around Mediterranean Europe, and the Victorians, who loved ecological disasters just as much as they loved their botanical gardens, used to introduce and grow these things um, as a way of providing nice, lovely evergreen bushes on their estates, but also as ways of hiding or providing hides for game birds and stuff like that too. Now, they crossbred these roddies, uh, the European roddies, with North American and other forms to make them hardier in the Scottish environment. And <laughs> it worked. Rhododendrons thrive because what happened is, here on Rassi, for example, the estate that owned the island had these lovely roddies in their gardens. The botanical gardens were left to run wild because, of course, what happened is societal change and economic collapse. The estates ran out of money, they were abandoned, and the roddies began to spread and spread and thrive. You see, the ground here is not great. It's very acidic. Roddies love that. What's more, when roddies grow, they have this unusual way of growing. You can see here they're kind of spreading along. The moment one of these branches hits the ground, it roots again. And when it roots, it grows more and more and more. And more than that, and it's actually quite hard to see, but if we look over here, you can see roddies destroy everything inside them. There is no light left in there for any plants to regenerate and grow. But more than that, the thick foliage blocks out any light. Then the actual leaves themselves, the rotty plant, exudes a kind of chemical, a toxin, which kills nearby plants and actually repels animals. You know, dormouse and earthworms and birds that would normally inhabit a forest like this can't because these roddies are toxic. That's right, the leaves themselves are actually toxic. In fact, bees that make honey from the flowers from roddies are toxic. The honey itself is toxic. It can make you poisonous. It can kill you. Now, <laughs> this makes it sound, like I say, that the rhododendron was kind of manufactured to spread and, and kill. And it, it's an unintentional side effect, but it is one that, if left unchecked, can ruin entire woodland areas, of which there are lots in the UK that are very much at risk of other things such as themselves anyway. So it can be stopped. You can cut them, you can burn them, you can use diggers and chainsaws, you can inject weed killer directly into the roots, you can expose the roots and burn them. But it is hard work and every year the roddies come back. The flowers can spread millions uh, of, of spores every single year. <laughs> Talked about bees, these little lovely purple flowers, you can see them starting to come out now. They are, again, part of the roddies plan. They are so bright, so purple, that the bees are actually attracted to these more than any other flowers around them too. They are actively killing and destroying every single iota or moment of the day. Um, they're horrible things. And here's my little bit of advice. If you have a roddy in your garden, destroy it, remove it, tear it out of the ground, burn it. It's going to come back next year, do it again. Keep doing it over and over and over again until they are gone forever. They are a blight. And left unchecked, what is a lovely little bush at the bottom of your garden could turn into this. Uh, we have about a hectare of land here. It is all covered 
in this right here. It's a lot, but it is my life work to get through it and return this forest back into one that animals can actually live in, including myself. So uh, anyway, just a little bit of a PSA. When you see these lovely flowers, these lovely plants, remember that there's a slightly insidious side to them and they are not native to the UK. Anyway, back to it. Damn it! <laughs> I knew <laughs> I knew this would happen. <laughs>